Right, well, it's 11 o'clock, so let's kick things off. And um, welcome, everybody. Hope you're all safe and well. This is our second webinar of 2021. And today we're going to be looking at the two techniques that will increase your pension value and boost your retirement income. So first of all, just a bit of um, housekeeping. Um, obviously, we're going to go through some financial information today, but it is for guidance only. It's not advice. Um, obviously, your own situation is very personal to you. So if you do have more complex questions and queries, we do urge you to speak to a professional financial advisor. And I happen to know a really good one. Um, the webinar will run for about 30 to 35 minutes and there will be a chance for questions at the end. So do feel free to type the questions in the Q&A box, at the, uh, I think about the top of your screen. Um, and we'll spend about five, 10 minutes just trying to get through those questions at the end. Um, it's really important that yeah, you stay till the end because I will be letting you know how you can get a copy of our Simply Investing Guide and also a recording of the presentation today. So you'll all be able to get access to that at the end of the webinar. So before we um, crack on with the main webinar, just a little bit about your presenter today, me. Um, and apologies for those of you who are on our last webinar. We'll just run through this. Um, quickly but yeah my name is Carl Roberts I'm a qualified registered and practicing financial advisor um, and yeah my path originally started or started down the legal profession route um, and I did a law degree at university uh, but at the end of my law degree I just found that actually law wasn't for me and actually I'd always been fascinated by money I'd always been a good saver I'd always been interested in economics so rather than pursue my legal practice course at the time I decided to go about my financial qualifications and um, became a chartered financial planner and also now a fellow of the Personal Finance Society, um, which all means I'm one of the most qualified financial advisors in the country now. And I've always loved learning and I continue to study to this day. I'm currently looking at a, an economics degree course. Um, and here's a picture of my grandmother's wall. Um, and my younger brother, Sam, is similar to me in that whilst he's not involved in finance, he is constantly learning. And we have this helpful, healthy rivalry of who can do the most degree level courses with the ultimate aim of having the most graduation pictures on my nan's wall. Um, my first job in finance was actually working in the head office of one of the biggest mortgage advisors in the country. And it was not long after 2007 and the great financial crisis, which I'm sure many of you will remember. Yeah, this is where we saw the financial system nearly collapse. Your banks were nationalized, there was big unemployment numbers and big hit to GDP. But the worst thing for me was seeing your real life examples of some of my colleagues in the banking industry losing their jobs and people losing their homes for repossessions. And this really sparked a passion in me to help people manage their wealth better, to avoid these issues and make the most out of life. And fast forward to today, um, I've created and I run RTS Financial Planning, which it offers financial advice and investment management to those particularly thinking about retirement. So enough about me. Um, so today we're gonna to be talking about pensions, basically, and how to boost their value. Um, but I wanna be really clear on what type of pension we're talking about first. Um, this webinar is going to focus on a defined contribution pension. This is the only pension or type of pension that you have control over. So we're not going to be talking about the state pension, the government pension. We're not going to be talking about defined benefit final salary type pensions because those pensions you have no control over. You know, what you get is defined by law and the rules of the scheme. But with a defined contribution pension, you do have a lot more control over it. And, and it's now the most common type of pension that you'll see set up by most employers, or it's a pension that you could be setting up yourself. Now, this type of pension will have lots of different names, um, depending on you know, which company you've worked for and how they've set up the scheme, but they all pretty much work the same. A defined contribution pretty much works the same way. And the end result is that you end up with a pension pot that is based on what you paid in, what your employers paid in, the tax relief you've received and how well your investments have performed. 
So what are these two techniques that are going to increase your pension value and ultimately boost your retirement income? Well, the first technique for increasing your pension value is all around the cost of your pension and the cost of your investment. So I just want you to picture the scene in a minute. So you're sitting in your Vauxhall Astra and there's nothing wrong with a Vauxhall Astra, by the way. You're in a traffic jam. You look out the window and next to you is a gleaming Lamborghini. So the Lamborghini probably costs around 200,000, whereas your Astra costs around 20,000. But ultimately, they both do the same thing. They're trying to get you from A to B. They're trying to take you on a journey and get you to your destination. Now, yes, the Lamborghini could get you there faster. It will look better. But there is nothing it can do about speed limits, accidents or traffic jams. And it's the same for your pension and the investments inside your pension. Ultimately, your pension is there to build you a fund so that you can have an income in retirement. Paying for an expensive pension plan or an expensive investment might aim to grow your funds faster, but there is nothing an expensive pension plan can do about events in the world that might affect investments. So it can't do anything about wars. It can't do anything different about financial crises, pandemics, or even US presidents. You know, an expensive pension is going to be impacted by the same events as a lower cost pension. Now, I really like this quote from Vanguard, who are you know, one of the biggest investment managers in the world um, and have a focus on low cost investing. And I think they say it right, where they say, they, have, you know, say you have to spend money to make money, but the money you pay to invest has a big effect on what you have left in your own pocket. You don't let high costs eat away your returns. Pension investments is the one area in the world where you don't really get what you pay for. So when it comes to setting up your pension, if you were doing this yourself, you'd probably search around for a, you know, a big brand name that you trust and felt comfortable with, and a name that you recognised. And it's the same with most employers. You know, they'll go to one of the big insurance providers, um, asking them to help them set up a, a pension. And some of these companies have been around for years, which means they have very old pension schemes, legacy schemes, that many people will still have today, having been um, employed years ago and picked up an old pension scheme. And these types of pensions are a bit like a convenience store, a bit like the smaller Tesco Express you tend to see on the high street. Yeah, they'll be limited in what they sell. They'll only stock a small range of investments and it's usually their own funds. And the problem with some of these older schemes and going direct to the big boys is that they operate an old fashioned charging model. You, know, you pay that premium for the convenience, a bit like in your Tesco Express. And you know, we, we're reviewing clients' pensions all the time, you know, old pensions that they've had from previous employers. And this is still a typical charging structure that we'll see in some of these old pension schemes. There'll be an initial charge um, for paying money into your pension and that can be still five percent of the money you invest so it means you have to make just over a five percent return just to get back to where you were before actually making any money and still some of these old schemes will have a ongoing charge and it can be about one and a half percent a year of the pension value Some of these pensions also still have a number of other admin fees. Yeah, they'll, they'll sort of charge you for anything, really. If you want to switch your underlying investment funds, if you want to take money out of your pension, even if you're just sort of changing your married name. And some, if they don't have a website, and believe me, there are still pension providers out there that don't, they'll actually charge you just to get a valuation statement on your pension. So what's the impact of you know, a higher, higher charge in pension? Well, let's look at an example. So here we've got a pension that's, you know, I've got 100,000 and this person's going to save 500 pounds a month for the next 20 years. 
and let's say, yeah, they do quite well with their investment strategy and they get about a 6% return every year for the next 20 years. So if you had that 5% initial charge structure and the annual charge 1.5%, what's the impact? Well, here you go. So in 20 years time, the fund would be worth just over 412,000 pounds. But look what it could have been worth had you not had those excessive charges over 136,000 has been lost in charges alone. So how do we get lower charges on our pensions? Well, you need to look at the supermarket option. Yeah, you wanna be going for scale, somewhere that is going to give you access to the whole of the market so you can pick and choose your own investments and find all the discounts. And nowadays, most of this is done via platforms, online platforms that, you know, they're not necessarily from the big names that we looked at earlier. They're more technology focused companies that offer you access to all different funds. And because they're huge platforms, they're able to offer discounts because they're buying at scale. They're not old insurance companies with lots of legacy products. And the beauty of these platforms is that you can hold all your different investment wrappers in one place. So you can have your pensions next to your ISAs and your general investment account. And you can sort of switch the funds in between without paying costs. So it keeps everything in one place, easy to monitor, easy to invest. And what's the difference when we look at charges? Well, typically, like we said earlier, an old pension might have that initial charge a RAP platform won't usually have an initial charge to invest. The ongoing charges will be split out. So you'll pay a cost for the platform and a cost for your investment. So you can control what investment funds you use. And plus, yeah, they don't have all these extra admin charges for switching funds, taking money out or changing your money between ISAs and pensions. But does low cost mean lower performing? Well, actually it's far from it. So we did an exercise where we looked at pension investment funds that have over 1 billion pounds invested in them and they're charging one and a half percent a year. And we picked, um, you know, one, one name we picked here, Halifax, because it's a well-known brand, it's a well-known bank on the high street. So a lot of people will have their money invested in this Halifax pension fund. Um, and what we did is we compared this fund that has over a billion pounds worth of people's pensions invested in it to a low cost investment doing exactly the same strat investment strategy but charging much less so this vanguard option only charges 0.23 percent a year so on investing 100,000, if you look over the last four years there's nearly a 20,000 pounds difference in the end result so the vanguard cheaper fund has outperformed the halifax fund with a billion pounds worth of people's and pensions money in it by 20,000 over the last four years in that example. Now, unfortunately, many people probably won't look at where their pensions invested. They won't spend time on it. Yeah, when you set up your pension with your employer, you probably just put into a default workplace pension fund because a lot of these pensions will be set up with default funds at different risk levels if you're not wanting to pick your own investments. And this is where there could be a problem because the default fund might not be the right investment for you. It could be expensive um, and it might not be at the right risk level for you. So remember, be really clear on where you're invested. If find out the charges that you're paying for your investments and keep these costs down because high costs seriously damage your wealth. So this is the first technique of really boosting your pension values, keeping more of what you earn. So what's the second technique? Well, the second technique is all about improving the investment performance of your pension. So if you can get your costs right down and up your performance, you've got the double whammy here. So I just want to introduce you to the rule of 72 if you're not familiar with it. This is a little rule I really like, and it's a really simple way of seeing the result of different levels of investment return. And basically the way it works is you take the number 72 and you just divide 
the annual rate of return that you're receiving. And it will tell you how many years it takes to double your money. So let's just look at a couple of examples. So if you're earning 1% a year as a return on your money, and you're probably going to get this if you're you know, having money in a cash bank account, 1% if you're lucky. Um, but even if your pension investments are performing at about 1%, then 72 divided by one means it's going to take 72 years to double your money if that's the level of return you get. Now, I'm sure you'll agree, you know, many, most of us aren't going to be alive in 72 years' time to see the value of our money double. But what about if we just are able to increase the return slightly? Well, if you can increase it and get maybe 3%, then you can see you know, straight away it's reduced that time frame significantly. It's now saying it's only going to be 24 years to double your money. But what about if we can really increase our investment performance? What about if we could achieve you know, over 10% a year investment returns? Well, now we're talking because now it's just under seven years to double your money. So think how many times you could double your money over the next few years if you were to able to achieve a decent investment return. And I picked 10.5% because it just happens to be our annualized seven year return from our flagship RTS investment strategy. So how do we get better performance? Well, the first place to start is that you need to be really clear on why you're investing and what your end goal is. You know, when do you want to retire and how much do you need to retire? And this will help you determine how long you need to invest for and what sort of risk you should be taking. So be really clear on your investment goals first. And I really like this quote from Adam Smith from his book, The Money Game, where he says, if you don't know who you are, the stock market is an expensive place to find out. Basically, meaning if you don't have some goals and a target of what, why you're investing, you're going to be chopping and changing um, changing up your risk levels and ultimately you're going to be paying more in fees and you know, destroying your investment performance. You need to be aware of the key difference of managing your money over the short and long term as this is going to allow you to determine what risk you need to take. So if you're thinking short term, so if you need money for the short term then we would call that saving. You're gonna to need to save that money into very low risk or cash-based savings accounts. But if you're thinking longer term, and obviously with pensions, we would always say that's a long-term investment, then that's where you're gonna be investing. And many clients or people I speak to um, have the same view that actually when they approach retirement, they feel they should be taking less risk because they're soon gonna be drawing on their funds. But actually, you need to flip it around and say, right, when you retire, how long is your retirement going to be for? And for most people, it's going to be around 30 years or longer. You know, do you want to be invested very low risk and in a very low return if, you've got, if your money has to last 30 years? Now, we looked at this topic and longevity and the whole issue of it in our last webinar, um, which is still available on the RTS Financial Planning YouTube channel. So if you haven't seen that yet, I'd urge you to go back and have a look at that because we've got some really interesting stuff on you know, just how long your money needs to, needs to last for. So if you're going to be investing, you need to be really clear and understand that risk reward go hand in hand. You know, the greater the risk you take with your investments, the potential for higher reward, but also the more you go for a higher reward, the higher the risk that your money falls in value. And your choices when it comes to investing, you've basically got you know, four different asset classes that you can invest in. You've got property, usually commercial property. You've got bonds or fixed interest accounts. Obviously, you can put your money in cash or there's the stock market. You're investing in equities, the great companies of the world. Now, for most people, cash isn't going to be an appropriate investment strategy in their pension, because remember, it's for the short term saving cash. And usually when it comes to property, there's only certain types of pensions that are going to allow you to invest in commercial property. So for most of you, 
an appropriate pension investment strategy is going to include a mix of stocks, your equities and lower risk bonds. But it's not about trying to pick you know, the best companies to invest in or the best sectors. Actually, what's gonna have the biggest impact on your investment returns is your actual mix of whether you choose equities or bonds or property or cash, you know, the asset allocation, we call it. That's gonna have over a 90% effect on what your end result's gonna be. So you might have picked the best you know, company to invest in. Let's say you, know, you picked Apple um, as a company to invest in. There's nothing Apple can do if the stock market crashes. It will crash along with the rest of the stock market. So it's, the, it's more about the mix of equities versus bonds that's gonna have a bigger impact. Because usually when one goes up, the other goes down. You know, bonds are lower risk, equities are higher risk. So if equities go up, um, you know, bonds go down and vice versa. And this helps smooth out returns. And here's a, just a little example. If we look at the performance of equities and bonds over the last five years, yeah, we would expect equities to outperform over the long term because this is the great companies of the world here, but it will be much more volatile than bonds. But by mixing, you still get good performance, but less volatility. So if you look at this example here, the red line is global equities. This is the global stock market over the last five years, the performance. And the green line, the bottom line, is a global fixed interest bond market. So you can see that green line is much smoother because bonds are a lot lower risk but obviously you don't get the returns. The blue line is a 50-50 mix of the two. So you know, you're getting a bit more performance, but taking a little less risk. And it's that mix that's absolutely key to determine the right risk level for you. So once you've got your right mix, how do you determine you know, what investment funds to hold? So interestingly, there's over 40,000 listed companies in the world on the stock market. Yeah, so how do you go about picking the right companies or, or the right investment funds for your pension fund? Well, you've pretty got much got sort of two strategies to go for, two schools of thought, really. You've got people who or funds that are active funds with active fund managers. And what these managers are trying to do is they're going to try and beat the market. They're going to select different stocks for you and they're going to time the trades all with the aim of trying to beat the market itself. And of course, because they've got to, you know, employ lots more staff to do all the analysis, a lot more technology, they're going to charge you more for doing this. Now, in terms of what is the market, you know, a stock market is basically an index. It's a collection of stocks usually by country. So you've probably all heard of the FTSE 100, which is one of the most common stock markets on the world. And actually it's the 100 largest UK listed companies. So an active manager involved in that area will be trying to beat the FTSE 100. And then on the other hand, you've got passive investors or tracker investors or index investors, and they don't pick trades. They'll just basically buy the whole market and let it do its job. They're not trying to beat the market. They'll just buy the market and get the return that the market delivers. And of course, they'll charge you a lot less because you know, they can use computer programs to track the market. They don't need to do all this analysis and strategy. So which strategy is better, passive or active? Well, again, it's a bit like our sort of car journey earlier. You know, both these investment funds are trying to get you to the same place. And again, you know, there's nothing they can do about world events. And another way to look at it is this. Now, have you ever played the game, guess how many sweets are in a jar? You probably have. And I'm assuming you, know, you just came up with a guess. Or did you try and count as many sweets as you could see? Either way, you probably found out that your guess was nowhere near the correct answer. But strangely, if you took the average of all the answers given by all the other participants, you're far more likely to have been closer to the correct answer. And this is what's known as the wisdom of the crowd. 
So passive investors don't try to guess. They look at all the decisions of the crowd and go with the collective decision. Now I want to introduce you to a chap called Warren Buffett, which some of you may have heard of and some of you may not. And he runs a company called Berkshire Hathaway, who um, you know, invest in companies all over the world. So it's, it's pretty much a you know, investment management company. Um, Warren Buffett, he's the fourth richest man in the world. He's currently age 90, still working today, investing in companies. He's worth around 85 billion. And investors all over the world consider him the greatest ever investor. And you know, if you want to know more about him, he's such a fascinating character. Um, you know, I urge you to read up on him because you know, he's, he's such a humble guy. He lives in a very small house still, say so still going to work at 90, plans to give most of his wealth away to charity. He's just really interesting. And he's probably the most successful active investor we've ever seen. So if you'd invested in shares of Berkshire Hathaway back in 1964, it would have cost you $19. And if you would have held those shares um, up until 2018, one share would have grown to $290,000. And for those of you who are trying to calculate that, that's an annualized return of 20% a year. That's how successful he's been. But interestingly, nowadays, if Buffett doesn't really believe it's possible to beat the market, particularly if you're charging higher fees. He, you know, he just feels there's too much data out there nowadays. You know, everyone's got access to the same information, so it's really difficult for someone to get an upper hand. And what's really interesting is that in 2008, Warren Buffett issued a challenge to the hedge fund industry. And if you're not sure what hedge funds are, these are you know, investment funds that usually ultra high net worth people will put their money into with the aim of those hedge funds beating the market. And what Warren Buffett said, he, he challenged the hedge fund industry and said that you know, because of their exorbitant fees, he didn't think their performance could justify those fees. And he felt that actually you'd get a better return by just investing in an index fund that tracks the market. So he bet that over the next 10 years, a US S&P 500 index fund would beat a hand-picked portfolio of hedge funds. And only one hedge fund, interestingly, took him up on his bet. So that tells you something to start with. But the hedge fund that took him up on his bet was a company called Project Day Partners. And the bet was, Buffett said, you know, he'll give one million to charity if he was proved wrong. So what happened? Buffett well and truly won. So on the left hand side, you can see some of the results over 10 years from the various hedge funds. And if we look at the average, you know, it was a 22% return over, over the 10 years, but look at the index fund. So just by doing nothing, putting your money in index funds, staring out the window, never touching it, you, know, you would have beaten these huge hedge funds charging mass um, you know, expenses um, and he was proved right. And again, it all comes down to costs. You know, costs really matter. Because the hedge funds charge such excessive fees, you know, they have a really high hurdle to jump before performance beats the market. So you know, some of these hedge funds, their actual strategies could have beaten the market, but because they charge such high fees, it, it makes them underperform. You know, this table is interesting. If you look um, you know, on the left-hand side, these are sort of percentage charges that different investment funds will charge. And if you look at the top one, the cheapest fund, over a course of 30 years, you get to keep sort of 97% of the portfolio you build. Whereas if you look down the bottom, you know, a fund charging you one and a half percent over 30 years, you only keep sort of 63% of the portfolio you, you, you earn. So we generally believe that you know, the index passive option is going to be right for most people. But then the question becomes, yeah, which markets do you track? You remember there's lots of different markets, lots of different countries in the world that you could invest into. You know, how do you decide which? Well, this is where you really need to think globally. You know, what is the collective decision of all the investors in the world? And here's a recent snapshot of the global market. So this is where the world's money is invested. And therefore, it gives us an aggregate view of how investors across the world are allocating their capital. 
because while, yeah, while it's impossible for us to know how each of the millions of investors across the world are sort of investing, what their ideas are, yeah, the bigger picture will tell, tell us what the collective decision is. It's a bit like yeah, the sweets in the jar. We're not trying to guess, we're looking at what the collective decision is. So you know, think globally when you're looking at your investments. Now, a lot of people make the mistake of having what's called a home bias. You know, they'll, they'll put more of their money in the UK stocks because it's what they know, it's what they feel comfortable with. Um, but look at this map, you know, the UK market only makes up 5% of the world's investments. So think of all the opportunities you're missing out on if you've got the bulk of your money invested in UK companies. And unfortunately, this is a problem with default pension funds going back earlier. A lot of default pension funds will have a bias towards UK investments. OK, so yeah, you've got your investment goal, you've got your risk right. You've gone for sort of the, the tracker low cost option and you've thought globally about your investments. The final thing you need to do is really stay the course. Keep to your plan unless your plan changes. Now, there's going to be lots of things that are going to try and knock your your plan off, off its road, off its, off its tracks. But if the plan's right and you're clear that your strategy is right at the start, you need to stick with it. You know, here's a classic example. Look at all the different events that have gone on since 1988. And there's something all the time, you know, obviously we're going through a huge thing at the moment with the pandemic, but before that, you know, we've had Brexit, we've had you know, a US president um, that's done some interesting things. We've had the global crisis. There's always something that's gonna you know, knock markets. But what's interesting about this picture is that, you know, the falls are very dramatic, but they're quite quick. But the growth is very slow and steady, but it's consistent over time, over the longer term. So don't let the noise, news and the world event, events knock you off course. You know, as we come to the end of this sort of presentation, um, I think this quote from Nick Murray um, really sums it up quite well, where he says, you know, time in the market is a fool's game, whereas time in the market is your greatest natural advantage. So um, I appreciate we've, we've sort of covered a lot quite quickly here, particularly on the investment side. Um, so, you know, obviously, if there's more information you want on some of these topics, do provide feedback um, and reply to the email that we send you later. Uh, if you'd like a follow up webinar on different subjects. Um, obviously, we've got our own solutions that deliver all of that we've discussed. So, again, if you want more detail on these, please get in touch. But just to summarise. You know, the two key strategies you need to be thinking about for your pension funds are getting your costs down yeah, because expensive doesn't mean better. You know, the pensions are all doing the same thing. They're all built to provide you with a retirement income. So why pay more? You consider wrap platforms, particularly if you've got lots of older style pensions um, and you want to look at sort of consolidating them and being on top of where they're invested, but get your charges down. And on the performance side, yeah, be really clear on your investment goals. Know what you're aiming for. Know the return you need to make. Uh, know how much risk you need to take. And make sure your asset mix is really um, correct for that risk level that you want. You know, do look at those passive tracker funds. They're much lower cost. They're going to deliver you the market return. Yeah, and we know the evidence shows that most active fund managers don't beat the market. And definitely don't try to time the market. Yeah, just stay the course, stay invested. Don't worry about the um, events that are going to come along as long as your strategy is right. So I mentioned at the start that um, we will be giving away a, our Simply Investing Guide, which we'll talk about some of these subjects in a bit more detail. So you will receive an email after the webinar, a bit later this afternoon. And the, with that email, you will have a copy of the presentation and the guide itself. So we've just got a bit of time for um, a couple of questions. So just bear with me while I just have a quick look on the question box. And if you've got any questions, now's the time to send in. Okay, there's 
couple of questions here on the same sort of subject. Um, and it's around, you know, how do you find out the charges you're paying on your pension? Um, so yeah, good question. And obviously a lot of it will depend on the individual provider. So the regulator recently has, has sort of forced providers to be much clearer on their and transparent on their charges. So as you receive annual statements, you should start to see sections where it will tell you the charges you're paying. Um, if you've got an online account access to your pensions, then there should be um, a charging tab or a transactions tab. Um, again, if you look through there, you'll start to see some of the charges that are coming out. Um, obviously, if you've got any issues or you're still struggling, you know, just ask your pension provider because they have to give you that information. And if you're struggling to get it and they're being a bit sort of cloak and dagger, then you know, report them, report them to the regulator because it should be very clear and transparent. Okay. Um, I've got one about um, how you go about changing the investments inside your pension. Um, again, it will depend on your particular pension provider. So if it's a more modern pension with an online account, some of these online accounts now do um, have a section where you, know, you can change your investments. It will list out all the different investment options you've got. And each investment option should have what's called a fact sheet. So it should be a little PDF link um, where you can click on the fact sheet and that fact sheet will tell you, you know, all about what the fund does and where it invests, but also more importantly, the management charge for that particular fund. So if you're looking for sort of those low cost tracking funds, that's where you're going to be able to find it. Um, you know, the older style pensions, unfortunately, might still ask you to complete a paper form, um, you know, to, to switch your investments. It will ask you, you know, what do you want to sell out of, what do you want to sell into? Um, but just be really careful, you know, if you're not sure what you're doing, get some help. You know, we're happy to, um, you know, provide some assistance here because, you know, you don't, you don't want to be sort of selling out of one thing and buying another if you, uh, it's really high risk if you're not entirely sure what you're doing. Um, and another question we've got here is on um, whether it's better to consolidate all your old pensions into one. Um, typically, yes, it will be. Because, um, you know, if, the more money you have on one pension platform, it's likely it will bring your costs down overall. Um, but you do need to be careful with some of the older pensions in particular, um, because some of these older pensions may still have other sort of benefits that aren't available in today's modern pensions. So, for example, old, some older pensions may still allow you to take a higher level of tax free cash when you retire. Some may give you a form of guaranteed income when you retire that's higher than what you'd get on the open market. So there's some of these things that need to be looked at. I mean, the pension provider should sort of tell you this before you decide to transfer. Uh, but again, just be wary of that um, before you decide to consolidate everything together. Okay, so I think that's it for the questions now. So there was just um, time for me to just let you know um, of our next webinars coming up. Um, so the next webinar we're going to do in March is going to be all around defined benefit pensions. Um, so, you know, I appreciate some of you may have um, defined benefit pensions, some of you may not, but if you have a private sector defined benefit pension, this is going to be the webinar for you. It's, it's really crucial that, you know, you find out about your options here, you know, the, the advantages and disadvantages of this type of pension and some of the risks. Um, and again, like I said, I appreciate not everyone has that type of pension. So we have already scheduled our another webinar in for April. Um, and this time we're gonna move away from pensions slightly and look at inheritance tax, um, which is a subject that I'm getting more and more queries about now, um, you know, from people that are being caught by inheritance tax and you know, wanting to protect their family's wealth. So you know, these webinars are both ready for registration. Um, I'll provide details in the web uh, email that I send after this webinar so you can get logged in for those. Um, but yeah, that's it for me. Thank you so much for uh, attending. Um, really appreciate your support. Um, I hope you found that useful. Um, here's uh, my contact details. So if you've got any questions that we've not been able to cover today, do please follow up. Um, the website has lots of sort of blogs, um, articles and all sorts of financial information, guides, videos. 
Um, and also there's a little um, book an appointment section. So you can just book directly into the diary if you'd like to have a chat. And we're actually offering a free pension review worth £497 at the moment. So if you've got pensions that you want looking at, um, you know, please take us up on that opportunity. So yeah, until next time, um, please stay well and safe um, and hopefully speak soon. Thank you.